you the internet i'm richard how are you welcome to fmtraining.tv i'm richard carlton creator of fmtraining.tv where only the crazy people hang out or the people that are super highly talented right they're crazy and they're super highly talented or they're disgruntled or they've got other issues kyle williams uh -uh -uh. so uh welcome to friday it's an awesome day we're going to be covering lots of awesome FileMaker stuff. Why are we here? Because somewhere on the chart, I'm going to press the magical button. One, two, three. And uh, somewhere everyone's on this chart. <clears throat> we got business owners. we got brand new developers. we got intermediate people. we got like senior ninja people over here. So today's broadcast is kind of intermediate and advanced. We're going to be covering some neat topics. But the FileMaker platform, low-code platform, with kind of the ability to, it's like a gateway drug. It starts off low-code. And then it gets in and you get better and better and you want to do more cool stuff with it. And suddenly you're doing kind of pro code level stuff with it. So it's like a gateway, it's like a gateway drug to success. And so FileMaker leads to uh, aggressive uh, FileMaker use. So the upcoming broadcast schedule right here, that's the wrong button. How about that button? There we go. So today is Kyle Williams, a pretty awesome FileMaker developer. He's been doing it quite a bit. Um, I did want to address something real quick before we get too far going. But we've got day five and six of Nick Hunter next week on the FM uh, Gal FM Gallery Solution. The website, the FM Gallery website, is coming right along. Uh, Wednesday next week is going to be archiving records with Calvin. Following next week, a week from today or yesterday, Thursday, Friday next week, uh, Kyle Williams is going to have uh, JSON for this group of people right here, basically beginning developers. If you're right here, maybe easing into this area over here, this is going to be a JSON conversation for you. As a reminder, to help us run this channel, we really recommend, we really appreciate it when you purchase our training, come here, buy our training. If you would like a two-year double bundle, email support at RC Consulting. Say, I want a two-year super deal, and they will send you the link for that. Otherwise, uh, you can get the one year uh, either with, with FileMaker, if you need FileMaker, or just the training right here by itself. Uh, Kyle, are you ready to kind of take over now? So this is Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle, I hear you creaking and crackling and doing all sorts of stuff. So now, just so you know, yep. if your screen's too small and people complain, I'm just going to let them vent at you directly. So just so you know, right? So, oh, and then we have samples. Samples for this at all, Margaret? Yes, no? Yeah. All right, Kyle. Launch, I, I, I sent samples over uh, to her. I'm, um, I am I, grabbing I send the it through Slack. Them. Cool. So. Margaret's going to post those everywhere. So. All right. Uh, so this is a collection of a lot of different development tools that I've put together. Uh, so I, I, I've been building a developer tools file for years and years. So I just pulled some of the things from my developer tools file uh, to share with everyone today. Um, so we're going to start with a clipboard editor. And uh, before we get too far, okay, so uh, before add-ons were invented, I started putting together a collection of uh, objects that are pasted from the clipboard in XML format, where I can easily just click this paste the clipboard button, go into layout mode, and I can paste it, and there it is. Uh, so really handy. Um, and then... Whoa, 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 just stop. Okay, you're ripping through this like a you know, a shark through a pile of surfers, right? I mean, way too right. fast on this. So so you have a bunch of text over there, okay? Yeah, so there's a bunch of XML here. This and is then, all the objects, all right. the details about it, all the CSS for the object. Yeah, that's great. And then you and you actually turn that into rendered objects in FileMaker on a layout. How did you do that? Okay. Uh, so the, let me get into the script here. Uh, so... That's clipboard object editor. So I have two scripts for this feature. Um, so this is using the base elements plugin. Oh, ah, okay. So it's not part of the native part of FileMaker, right? It so, is not so, native okay, to so FileMaker. Kyle, it does this is this is why we have to do training with you. We have to train you. That when you present stuff, it's like you. Everyone assume this is just magically part of. I'm going to have people that are going to email tech support tonight, going, <laughs> "Hey, I tried to paste this in there, and it doesn't work." Kyle's a liar, right? So I I I I, I don't want to create work for my tech support crew so you have to frame this entirely okay i love you all right so moving along yeah so how i did this is i have a insert object from clipboard mm -hmm. so that's this button insert from clipboard mm -hmm. and so it runs the script and so it's uh, using a get clipboard formats to get the format of it mm -hmm. so the format is required every object has a different format type mm -hmm. so i have here the clipboard object format and so that's what it looks like um, 
So it gives you a return to limited list, so it's getting the second value, which is all that you need from that function. And then uh, set field uh, object from clipboard. So that's pasting it into this uh, XML window here. And then uh, substitute edit. Uh, so right here, I'm uh, substituting all of these characters that it gives you. Because uh -huh. it, it doesn't give you this nice, neat formatted object. It gives you something that's just one big block of text. Really yeah, ugly. so it's uh, what what we call human readable, right? So human right. readable versus uh, readable. What, what's the opposite? Yeah. I yeah, mean, so I, you're you're in the coding business, Kyle. Take your time, slow down. If you if you have something that's human readable, what's the opposite of human readable? Computer besides, code. <laughs> besides a pile of completely unreadable. Okay, so everybody have... looks at it, they get a headache. They're like, "What am I looking at?" So, <laughs> so, so Ken wants to know where this stuff originate from, etc. <clears throat> Uh, so, for that, you got to talk to Nick Orr. <laughs> Nick Orr? No, 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 no. Not the base. Okay, not that part of it. But the, uh... Uh, so, this is something that I, you know, years ago, I was looking through all the base element plugin functions, and I came across these clipboard uh, functions. So, then I started playing around with it, trying to figure out how I can leverage that. Um, what, what can I do with those functions? Um, so, that's where I was coming up with these uh, uh, different scripts that I can use. Um, so this allows me to get the object from the clipboard, uh, and then I can paste it into here, and then I can modify it, and then I have another f function here that basically commits the record so it saves your changes, and then it uses another uh, base elements plugin, uh, clipboard set text, and then uh, so then it has the XML object here, and then it has the format. So the format is required so it knows what kind of object it's pasting to the clipboard. Because um, you can't just like paste a, a script on your layout. You can't paste the layout object into your script window. Uh, so that's controlled on the clipboard. Uh, and it prevents you from pasting things where they don't belong. <laughs> so, uh, All right. So and this is a hack. Today is a hack day. So we're doing hacks, yes, right? Yes. This is kind of some super advanced stuff if, if you really want to get into it. Um, so uh, what can you do with this is the next question. Uh, what this allows you to do that you can't do natively in FileMaker is you can adjust these to the top width. Um, so say uh, I want to do just one on the top and the bottom, and then I can paste that to the clipboard and paste that to the layout. And you can see that first button is a lot bigger than the rest of the buttons. So uh, we can have some fun with that if we want to. Um, so let's go back down here. I, I highlighted the sections that allow you to do that, so just to make it easier to find because it's a lot of text here. So I'm going to change that back to a six, change that back to a six, and then we'll go down here. Uh, so this is where we can have some fun with this. So this is something, again, you can't do this natively in FileMaker, um, but if I wanted to change the hover status, so you can see this as self hover. Um, so this, I, I just copied and pasted this into the section. And then now I can clip paste that to the clipboard. I can go in here. Uh, we'll just put that up there for a moment, make some room. Okay. And now we can go in here. And now as I hover over it, it's getting bigger, top and bottom. But the padding in between isn't changing. So we still have that six padding in between the buttons. But the top and bottom changes on hover. So that could be really cool for. Uh, hey, can I ask? Just stop for a second. So is that a real? I, I mean, I'm partially watching things and I'm partially watching you. And are these real buttons right here? Like, are they? What are these? These are. It's a button bar. These so are. This is a button bar object. So, so you it, so so you basically create a button bar that enlarges itself. It like blows itself up, right? Correct. Oh, when hover, and that's not normally part of something that. File maker would offer you. Yeah, so if you go into here, so you can see the padding says six. Uh -huh. uh, if I go to on hover, it doesn't even know what to call that because it has two different values. Uh -huh. It's kind of confused. <laughs> That's because but, but, I changed but it, the CSS. But, but it still renders it. So right. the, the layout mode, the editing doesn't know what to do. But the browse mode is like, hey, shit, let's go for it. Let's throw it up here. Yeah. All right. Wow. Yeah. I, I have a question. So if sure. you if you could let's just like take a step back from a strategic this is this is the kind of question I would ask you like the Richard Boss question so if you had a choice between add-ons doing add-ons add-ons or using it this way which I mean I know you've already created something but say you were going to create something from scratch right would you right. do it as an add-on or the clipboard editor thingy what do you think uh, 
every situation is going to be a little bit different. Uh, in this case, if I just want this one object, it, it is kind of cool to have this development tool file. So I can go in here and I can kind of scroll through here, see what else I have available. And then oh, I just man, I want that. Where the, go, hey, go hit the post-it note. Where's the post-it note at? I'm, I love that. So here, yeah. I can paste that to the clipboard. I can go in here. I'm just going to delete these. And we'll paste that. And there it is. <laughs> does it does it do anything, or this is, looks pretty? <laughs> uh, so this is going to be automatically hidden. There should be a, a calculation in here to hide it. Oh, so it's true. Uh, so this, if I go into browse mode, you're not, well, you shouldn't see it. Why is that? Maybe that needs to be a, a one. Uh, so the idea is that you have a developer note, mm -hmm. and then I, oh, this is, it is hidden. That's the, that's a preview. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that's why I put this uh, little blank space over here. So that's like a, a so little. Now you can see it's hidden. So, so this would just make it, I mean, it doesn't really magically enlarge itself or do anything. It just it gives us a really pretty little graphical thingy that we can do, right? I'll yeah. Post it out. Yeah. So. Wow, I'm impressed, Kyle. This is cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, this this is something I was working on before add-ons even existed. Uh, so you can also do scripts. So here, if I paste a script to the clipboard, and I go up here, and then let's just uh, add a new one down here. So I'm just going to paste this. Okay. So it was, to, it was pasted to the clipboard. I just did Control-V or Command-V, and now it's here. Uh, so now I can go over here, and this is part one of two. So now I go to part two of two, paste that to the clipboard. So now I can paste this to my layout. I can go exit layout, and then I can go over here and I can select this. Now I have a nice little slider button. Wait, so, wait, 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 what kind of object is that in reality? Say that again. Uh, what is so it? it's a slider control object. So if I go into the script here, uh, you can see it says go to object on off. So it's so, a so it's a two pa two pane slide two panel slide pane is what that is right exactly and it has the animation set to on so that way it shows you going back and forth so that that's how you get that slide effect. Um, well, so sh good that this should be like <laughs> built into the. I mean, this is so cool. This should be just built into the product. <laughs> yeah. But, as I said, this is something I, I was working on for years. Yeah, you know uh, who did a bunch in my of this? Tools file, I got hundreds of things. Yeah, no, NJ. <laughs> remember, NJ, he had, like, all these little hacks and stuff. And I talked to NJ briefly. He's not around too much anymore. He's the guy in Australia. But he was doing event planning, and the event business is kind of perked back up in Australia. So he doesn't have time for stupid FileMaker hacks. But he had all that really cool sh A lot of it was really performance intensive. It would kill FileMaker in terms of performance. But, boy. Yeah. Uh, so, again, here I have a, a web viewer object, and what's cool about this is it, it's a, it pastes a transparent web viewer, and so you go in here, and to make it transparent, so it's already got the code in here, so all I have to do is make that be triple F to make it white, or you can just type white, uh, and then you get a web viewer, but the background is transparent. Uh... So it, it's completely hidden until you load it. So if I put it over here in this empty space over here, uh -huh. it's invisible until I actually populate it with my script. That yeah, because that's not normally a thing you you can't normally can you can you normally have a web viewer that's I mean by default when you put a web viewer on screen it doesn't always put a frame around it or so, no 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 they, they don't always do that never mind I'm, I'm thinking about no that. it doesn't always have a frame you can add a frame if you wanted to yeah. you can go over here and, and give it the border here uh, solid yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. if I wanted to. So and then you get that frame around it. Ruben wants to know. Uh, Ruben, who apparently figured out a way to change his name back, uh, says, "Does a slider <laughs> button work also work on WebDirect?" Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's a well, it's a slider okay. Stop, stop, button. stop, it's, stop, Kyle. Slider Let control. It, stop, stop. Kyle, just, Kyle. Go ahead, Kyle. Kyle, just shh for a second. Let me give you a tip. This is one of the little rules for RCC staff, right? Now, you're not really RCC right. staff, but I'm going to kind of pretend like you are. If you haven't ever done it, don't promise it to the customer. So if someone says, will this make me a million dollars to win the lotto? You say, well, in theory, it should. It should work because WebDirect does everything. 
Uh, uh, so that that is a good question. I'm not sure about the answer. There you the go. Story. There's the answer. I so that, don't that's know. That's the part I'm not entirely sure. I we'll don't switch know. It. I don't. We'll go to the other object. No problem. So I don't work. Know. Whether or not it's going to show the animation is a big question. I don't know. See, so I that's like that. the part I don't know. Kyle, <laughs> it's good. You, I, there's nothing. There's not. Listen, people get afraid of saying I don't know, like it's a sign of weakness. Saying I don't know is a sign of strength. If you're a politician, they just they execute plan weasel and they'll like uh, say like, well, isn't it, isn't it really nice, warm and sunny today? Right? You ask some question they don't want to answer, they just deflect. Right? We answer the question. Yeah. We say oh, we don't know, or. We don't know, but you can give me $150 an hour to find out, right? So, right. yes. Uh, we do have another question from Twitch. Uh, can you hack the colors of objects? For example, use globals to set objects colors on vertical market solutions for clients with different color branding. Uh, so you're talking about changing the color of the object using a variable? Uh, no, you cannot do that. Uh, Wait, 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 wait. So, you, can, you can hack the colors for objects, exam solutions with clients with different. You, well, okay, back up. If you went over here, go back to the first one where you had the color thingy on that, right? The buttons or whatever. Say you had like your company was like all about orange and black, like a football team or something, right? Like the Bengals were right. orange and black or whatever. You could go in here and change the colors, right? Couldn't you? Uh, right. Yeah, I can, you know, like here, I can change the this color here. Of course, yeah. I'm using percents, which is kind of. Uh, but. I'm not sure if uh, if, I, if I use like a, a hex color here, if it'll work. Yeah, but the um, point is, is that because you're specifying the color here, you could change it to something else. I didn't say it was going to be immediately easy. We could do it. I'm just saying yeah, it, so, it, it is doable. Yeah. Alpha Coburn 73 on Twitch says the animations do not work on WebDirect. So you would click it. Yeah, I wasn't it. sure about that. That was kind of my question. If you click, it should just jump over. Uh, though there was another, like, but Scott asked, but the question is, can you change the colors dynamically depending on who the customer is using a global variable? I assume it's what the Well, okay. Oh, back Yeah, up. you can't do it with a global variable. I was kind of looking at borders. I, I don't think you can change the border uh, with the condition. Conditional so, formatting. You know what would be cool? It's a feature that FileMaker needs to have is that remember this whole page is just code, right? There's actually code. And so the base elements allowed us to stick the code in here. The add-ons are just text code. So eventually the the layout here is aware of its code. It is possible, and I, I hate to say this word, but Claire's could if they wanted to, if we asked for it. If we wanted to be able, be able to it live while on on browse mode, we could run a script that could inject, and then inject is this kind of this bad word because it's associated with viruses and stuff. But you could inject a CSS change or an HTML change or whatever drives this page, and you could change mm -hmm. this page on the fly. Technologically, it's totally doable. Claire's could deliver that, no problem. Um, I don't know if they will or they won't, um, but I'm just telling you that that that. It, this should be something that we ask them for and get because I could see that being a huge because instead of because I was thinking about changing it this is where you change as a developer then you drag and drop it on but if it's already over here I guess is the question right then you can change it in flight mm -hmm. changing it in flight is hard right so yeah. yeah yeah you can modify the code here you can then paste it to the object to the layout and It'll look and work the way you programmed it to, but you cannot change the code on the layout itself. Right, uh, so which is what that, we, that's need, the problem. we need to be able to do. That's why the yeah. web viewers are great, because the web viewers are dynamic code rendering yeah. little tools, right? So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, with the web viewer, you can modify the code in flight. Uh, so, I think I went... Oh, so here I was kind of showing that you can uh, make it a really big calendar icon. Because that's often come up where people are like, what is this little tiny uh, icon that I Oh, got? it's so stupid, yes. So, yeah, especially when you're trying to do something for an iPhone or an iPad. It, it's like you got this little tiny icon here. It's like, what is that? I can't even see it. It's so small. And, uh, so here, so i got to find it to a field. Uh, not to an image. Let's go to the description. Um, okay, that's not a date field. Okay, so... Because I don't have a date field. But... Well, then put one in. I want to see your calendar. <laughs> All right. So just great. 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 Okay. So now it in. It I have in. this. Let's go to the there date. Go. Go. Okay. So now we got the date coming down. Okay. 
So I, I put in their placeholder. You can change that to whatever you want, uh -huh. uh, depending on what this is. And then uh, now we have a nice big icon. Um, so that's something that you can't do natively in FileMaker, but you can go down here and you can edit the width of it. Uh, so I highlighted it. Uh, so this uh, this is padding on the right side of the text. So that way when you're in here and it highlights this text here, I don't know if it'll oh, revert, right? Um, so here it's highlighted, but the padding on the right, if you don't make this more padding, this blue part will extend into the icon. So that does need to be modified. Um, so that's where the right is, the right padding. And then we have the width of the icon. So here we have the icon. Uh, so the width of the icon, and then I highlighted the three padding for the top, which just brings it down from the top of the, the button or the field here. Um, so that's that three padding here, uh, which centers the icon vertically. Um, I think that was it for that one. Um, and then also you can make this uh, scroll bar wider. So you can see here it's the native scroll bar width. And then you can modify the CSS to make that wider if you wanted to. So again, that's good for iPads and iPhones and stuff. All right, it's pretty good so, hacky stuff. This is good stuff. Yeah, oh, we're, we're just getting started. I kind of wish we had two hours here. <laughs> uh, so uh, this, the CK Editor JS, uh, that drives CK Editor. Um, so here we have. Uh, JavaScript that runs this. If I go into wait, the, wait, wait. Do we need? Do we did. The, we did this the other day. Is this the good editor that didn't suck? The one that you. This you, is the good one. Yes. Yeah, so you, this. You made us suffer till the very end. That one. Yeah. Yeah. This is the part where I didn't show you what was going on in the background. <laughs> you see, there's way more than thirty thousand characters here. I can literally scroll for several minutes here. Uh, if I try to type, type anything, I get this length of selected text Ooh. cannot exceed thirty thousand characters. Okay. Okay. Uh, also, I, I have a custom function editor, so I was able to put it in a custom function. I don't really recommend using custom functions for this many characters because it could take several minutes for it to calculate all that JavaScript and make sure there's no errors in your formula with custom functions because it always evaluates, evaluates a custom function. Mm. But it does work. I can change, I can swap this out to use a custom function and save and then uh, reload and it still works can you go back and restate the reason we don't want to use custom functions and discuss that in detail because that is a major point. okay so I was, that's what i was getting to here so custom functions uh we have this if i go edit again it's what it looks like mm -hmm. and it just goes on and on forever just like the insert script right set. Right. And then, so the problem is I do not want to hit OK right now because this will take about three to four minutes right. to process all of this code. This is literally 1.4 million characters. Right. Uh, and so when whenever you create a custom function, it has to evaluate all of this text. It has to make sure that it's all going to work. Well, that there's no not missing... just a custom function. It evaluates it in a calculation field anywhere where you have a calculation, right? Right. A calculate, yeah, so this a cal one I did create, it, it took about four minutes for it to save. So, the, <laughs> so, so, so you don't want to put this much text into the calc engine. So you got around not putting in the calc engine by doing what? Doing What did you do again? You did a... Uh, well, I, I did it here, and that's when I experienced it with right. 1.4 million which is, characters. Which is bad. It's got to evaluate all of this. It's so which much is. for it to calculate. Um, so I'm just going to hit cancel. Otherwise, it'll take four minutes for it to save it. Uh, yeah, we got that part. Because then I have to reevaluate it. But how'd you get around it not evaluating ever? Uh, it will evaluate it. That's kind of the thing. Um, so I do have the custom function creator here. Uh, and I got a, I put character limit down here. Um, so this is a custom function for colors. Um, okay. I don't think you're understanding my question, right? This is kind of sure. a training function. So you said, go back to the script. You said, well, it's in this custom function, but I'm going to comment it out. And I could turn it on, but I don't really want to turn it on. That right. impl implies that, um, but I want you to say it. I want you to oh. say it. You, you're not, you're, you're, you keep covering half the conversation. So we right. don't want to use a calculation engine because if we paste, it doesn't matter what we paste into it, but if it's whatever it is really big, it's going to evaluate it. So we're bypassing the calculation engine by doing what? We're doing an insert text command instead? Uh, yeah, so insert text, it's not going to have to evaluate. 
So if I'm going in here and I say, okay, it doesn't evaluate that. When you create a custom function, it has to evaluate it to make sure that it's going to work as expected, that there's no errors in your formula. Uh, here, it's just inserting text, so it's not evaluating anything. And the target it knows that it's just text. And it's inserting it where? Into a variable? And then that it, variable? Yeah, it inserts it into a variable called ckeditor.js. And then so it's the same thing this is doing. Yep. And then then you render it how? It goes into a web viewer? Is that what you do? Or Yeah, so it's got the, the base HTML here. Uh -huh. And then the, this has a bunch of things in here that uh, right here, it's got a placeholder, uh -huh. a couple asterisks on each side. Uh, same thing right here. So here's where that uh, JavaScript comes in. Uh, so then it goes through here. It creates the CSS, creates the JavaScript. Uh, there's uh, FileMaker functions, which allows the interactivity. Uh -huh. So here it can toggle read only. It can load the text. It can save the text. Um, so by then, by us inserting text and not saying set because if we did like a set field that would be a calculation right it would evaluate right. it right so that, that the, the point what I'm trying to make here is a subtle one it's w actually more important than what you're trying to show people and that is that if you're using the calc engine with a set because normally people would do a set field or something right and then right. and by going through the set field you're in the calculation it's going to evaluate it by saying insert text. It's we've already established that the code is correct. We don't have FileMaker doesn't need to evaluate it. FileMaker just needs to pass it through and not evaluate, right? Basically, yeah. the idea. Yeah. So when you use insert text, it's not evaluating anything. It knows that all you're doing is putting text into a variable, so it doesn't care what you're what you have in here. Okay. Well, I, I I had not ever run into this before, uh, so I just learned something new. But I think the bigger yeah the bigger issue is understanding that the Calc Engine is mostly your friend until it's not, and then you need a way right. of getting around it, and you've showed us how to get around it. Maybe maybe yep. no one else is impressed with this, but this is the part that I'm glomming onto, right? So Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so while we're on this, uh, save real quick. So it's going to run. It's going to load. Uh, so when I was doing this demo presentation, uh, we had the issue of it saying small, uh, medium, yes. default, large, huge. Yes. And those were the only options. Yes. So here I've added in, in the fonts. Uh, I've also added in custom font colors. So like hot pink isn't a Ooh. default color. <laughs> so uh, so I, I just, uh, I made a video on my channel that you can see how I did that. Uh, or I can just show you real quick. Uh, in here, you can control what the uh, toolbar order is, how it displays. So here you can see undo, redo, heading. It's all in this order that we uh, specify here. And so here I added the font size. Here I've added the font colors. Um, and then here I've added the, the font background colors. So that's how you add that in there. Okay, back up. So the basic CK editor does not have the font size on it. I remember us having that conversation, right? So, right. So you've yeah, taken, so... taken their open source editor and you've made it a little better, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I was kind of showing you that you can modify all of this, so I can cut all of this out. It's just a JSON script here. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to save, and then we'll see what the default looks like. So there's the default uh... fonts. And then uh, as you get over here, it's got 15 colors that are default, mm -hmm. uh, and then it's got the, the exact same 15 colors for your backgrounds. So this is all customizable using that code. But, it, but so what is the distribution on this, right? And we talked about this is kind of open source. So what if I wanted to include this in starting point when you're editing you an email? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the free version. Uh, if you want to pay for the extra plugins, or I put a list of what that would include. So these are the pay for options. Uh, so easy image and CK finder, that's for just pasting an image into this code. Uh, so you can drag and drop a file or an image file and it'll display it. Um, the free version, you have to use a URL. So that was the other thing that we discovered is um, you have to insert with a URL. That's the only thing that works with, for free. So that's how I was able to get this image in here. Um, I, had another I, one. I remember that the whole word, uh, the wrapping issue we were wrestling with, right? Yeah. 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 So here you can wrap it. Uh, we found that that didn't work with emails. It mm. just put it like this in line. Okay. Um, but Still, it's kind of cool when you're in FileMaker and you're just creating something. Right here, I'm just going to show this real quick. This is previously unreleased, the version 2.0. Uh, so what this is doing is it's using an SVG. 
icon. Uh, I also added just sending the text in, and then it'll automatically <laughs> slide the text back out. Um, so the the problem here, every single one of these buttons, the background color is wrong. So this is why I added this in here. So not only to show you that you can do any SVG you want, mm -hmm. uh, so you can custom create your own SVGs to put in here if you want, or you can just have it just do plain text. Uh, I also added sliding in from the top or bottom. So it slides in from the top and then goes back up, or this slides in from the bottom, goes back down. So you can do it from all four different directions, yeah. um, which is kind of cool. Uh, is so, there a way to make it so if I click on the notification, it, like if it's a warning, it would redirect me to like a different um, spot in the database? Yeah, so here's there's a button click action, or here I... So you just have to modify the JavaScript to let it know what you want to do with that button, or if you want to just be able to select anywhere on this to have it perform an action you can do that you just have to okay. edit the javascript um so here i wanted to show you that all the backgrounds yeah yeah yep, so yep, i'm going to yep. show you how to fix that real quick and easy um so i'm just going to copy this i'm going to go back here clipboard editor new record insert from clipboard uh so here i'm going to do a find okay and uh, let me try to remember what what did I need to fix. So, oh, that's right. So it has, uh, I believe it was F2, F2, F2. And we wanted to replace that with FFF, replace all. So we found 21 occurrences. And now let's paste that back to the clipboard. And if we did this right, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to take this, delete it, paste all this back in. And now you don't have that background issue. Well, it's still white. This happens to match, right? Is that what we did? Or did you right. actually make so sure? So I just modified every single button here. It, that, that quickly, I was able to modify every single button to change the background of all of them. And that was in the JSON uh, for each of these. All right. So... Ken is so a real Ken right is, here. Yeah, I know. Slow down, slow down, slow down. So you're causing people to bleed. Literally, they're bleeding their own blood. That's a reference from a movie. Who's not going to make me bleed my own blood? <laughs> what movie is that? Anyone? Anyone? You can't make me bleed my own blood, right? So uh, uh, I, no. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, no, they know. There's someone's going to type it here in a second. No one makes me bleed my own blood. All right, so uh, the dodgeball. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, so from uh, what white what white Goodman. So listen. So um, Ken has can Mark. Can we bring? Hang on a second. So let's take a look at what what is our schedule? Because because Ken has a really great question, but I don't know that we can do it justice. Because Kyle's gonna because he's not gonna get through all his demos. But but the but what, what Ken wants to do is see you. We're going to give you a sample file. Not, you don't get to pick one. We're going to give you a sample file. We're going to have you glue in this tech stuff into the sample file to, like, make it, you know, like, do this, right? And so it's a, it would, the, the, the webinar session would be called Practical Deployments with Kyle's Crazy Bullshit, right? That would be the name of the live stream, <laughs> nice. right? So practical deployments, right? It's all, like, so like all socially, you know, acceptable then with Kyle's stuff. So... Um, Margaret, can you look at our schedule for that? See if we can in inject Kyle back into the schedule. Kyle, you okay with that? If we just we bring this back with this topic and have you kind of walk through. A... Yeah, because this is kind of a two day demo. <laughs> yeah, we need to have. No, I'm trying to get through two days of demo in, in one day. Yeah, yeah. So we need a uh, practical deployments of Kyle's crazy demos or some Kyle's hacks, right? Something, Margaret? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Good. Uh, so, uh, this, this little demo here is a button modifier. So, mm -hmm. uh, one issue with popovers is there is no control to give you a hand on hover with these buttons. Also, there's no hand on hover on any of these. Uh, so, right here, I pasted the buttons. I, I copied it from the layout, pasted it into this field, and now I'm just going to click this button, and it's going to modify all of this XML. Um, so basically what it's doing is it's swapping out the flag here. And this flag ID is that hand on hover. So when you change the flags all to this on all your buttons, 
and then you copy back to the clipboard. And now if I paste this back here, paste. So now we have all of our new buttons. You can see even the popover buttons. You have the hand on hover, all of these hand on hover. Uh, so one, one of the issues, one of the reasons I, I created this, not only to get the hand on hover with the popovers, which you can't do in FileMaker, but also with button bars. Sometimes you have 15 button bar, or buttons in your bar and you have to go through each one of them one at a time. And you got to just cycle through all of these and click here, go down here, click here. And if you have 15 of them, that, that gets really tedious real quick. Uh, and then when you use popovers, there is no hand on hover checkbox down here. So that they didn't give us the option. Um, so this uh, tackles two, two problems. So now I can just paste it right here. I can click this button, which gives me the updated code. I can paste that to the clipboard and then I can paste that to my uh, layout. So really cool handy trick if you have dozens of buttons or uh, a bunch of button bars on your layout. Uh, so I don't know if there's any questions. Well, no, I don't see any short questions. None yet. Okay. I mean, questions like um, show us how you roll this stuff into our own solution, kind of thing. So that's a, that's going to be day two of the uh, Kyle yeah. thing. So, um, so this is uh, I have not released this yet to anyone. I haven't even done any videos on it. Uh, so this is my progress bars. Uh, so I can do this, and it just does some default colors that I did. I can change the color just with the uh, JSON parameter. So the button parameter changes the color of the background uh. and the bar in the web viewer. Uh, I can put the percentage above the bar, or I can just have it with no progress, or I can even put it down here on the layout. So that's, that's really cool. If you're just loading a layout and you just want to have this on the layout itself, you can do that. And it puts a percentage right in the bar as it's loading, lets you know what's going on. Um, so I think that's really useful. Uh, a, a lot of people try to use, including Nick, try to use a, a couple fields kind of overlapping each other to uh, with a. That's uh, correct. There, you know, there's a, a, there's a hundred there's ways of doing a progress bar, I, but yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, so there's there's several different ways. Uh, this is using the web viewer HTML code. Um, so I, I played around a lot with this code to try to make it look nice and presentable, uh, and then I wanted to be able to have it be different colors dynamically um, so that can all be done inside of this json parameter here so I, I can tell it if i want a new window otherwise it'll look at the current layout um, what the web viewer name is so if it's named something different if i have multiple web viewers on the same layout and i want you know if i have different items and different progress bars going down the line i can specify which web viewer I want to modify. Uh, if percentage display type, uh, in bar means it's inside of the web viewer. Uh, and then there's also in, in the text, which is up above the web viewer, or empty is no percentage at all showing. And then uh, you can do different colors. Um, so here I actually, I'm using uh, what HTML or rather CSS colors. So you can see this isn't an RGB value. It isn't a hex value. It's not a decimal value. It's not anything, but it's actually using internet-based colors for Alice Blue and Teal. And I have a custom function that I created that's built into this, uh, manage custom functions. Um, so this is probably one of the coolest functions I've done. Uh, it, it can convert any color type into any other color type. Uh, it can also return a JSON script with all the different color options. Uh, so this, let me just uh, demo this real quick. Okay, so invert color. Say I want blue uh, return type. If I make this empty, I don't have a return type, I can do that. And from the color blue, I can see that the decimal color is 255. Uh, and then there's a hex color, the name of the color, and then the RGB value for the color. So the function, if I wanted to get RGB in there, I can evaluate that and it brings me the RGB value. 
So I can easily get any of the colors I want if I just want the name of it. Uh, or hex, I can just type those in there and it gives me those uh, conversions. Um, so really cool. Uh, that works. You can put a hex value in here and it'll return anything. Um, so uh, if I do that, that should be white. So that gives me white, it gives me the decimal color. Uh, so when FileMaker does this right here, if I copy that and uh, not everybody knows that it actually returns a number value. So if I do that and then evaluate it, it gives me this number. So in FileMaker, it's looking for the number of the color and that's how it uses colors. Um, so RGB converts it to a decimal. N not everybody knows that, so it's just kind of a neat little trick. Um, so that's this color right here. Uh, the hex value, of course, all Fs and white. Uh, so anyhow, uh, that's also included in this demo. Uh, and I use that for the, all the progress bars here. Uh, let's see, I did CK Editor. I, I also updated this, the C3 charting demo. Um, so this is, uh, if I go into here, custom functions, it's using this parameter here. And here I've separated out all of the parts. So if I wanted to change this to a bar, I can change it to a, a bar chart. There's all the options here for the chart. Um, so I was trying to put in all the options, a little description of what each of these should be or what they can be, um, like interpolation type. Here's your options. You can change this to any one of those to change it. Um, so um, my, my last presentation on this, I had a, all those fields and objects and it was all mapped in the, the function and uh, it made it really hard to port into other files. So here I've done a lot of work to, to make it more portable. Um, so right here, I have my, oh, that's the different grid lines. Uh, so yeah, it takes a little bit of research to really understand all of this. I, I don't have enough time to go into detail on it. Um, so different uh, lines. So like this label on 100 shows up. Um, so that's right here, label on 100. So you can modify that here. I can change that to two. I can change this to two. Um, okay. So I change it to a bar type. So now it's not a stacked bar, it's a regular bar. I move this uh, label on 100 up to 200 and change the label. So this makes it much more portable. Uh, so I thought y'all might get a kick out of that. <laughs> uh, so now it's a, one step closer to making an add-on with that. Um, so I think that's uh, that's all I had if anybody has any questions. Uh, uh, see, yep, there's Ru a Ruben big, had a question. There's a big, JavaScript big pile of questions. Libraries. Uh, have you made your own JavaScript library? Uh, so, yes, I do use uh, jQuery for a lot of things. It, it, it depends what I need. So there's lots of free libraries out there. Uh, the C3 charting uses a couple different libraries. This is using the C3 uh, JavaScript library as well as the D3 library. So it's two different libraries merging them together to create this chart. Um, but... Uh, like the CK editor, this is also a web viewer with JavaScript code. Uh, this JavaScript code is actually produced by CK editor, the company. Uh, so I did not create that JavaScript. I'm just leveraging it in FileMaker. Um, so what other questions do we have? Uh, well, above that, uh, well, that was the Ruben, never mind. Create uh, a library of modified objects. Yeah. Yes, you, you can create a library of modified objects. So that's what this clipboard editors allows you to do. So you can see here, I, I created a bunch of objects. Uh, you can also do scripts. Uh, also, if I wanted to, I can go in here and take a table. Uh, say, take this table with five fields and copy it. I can create a new record, insert from clipboard. And now I have that table. So the ta table I selected was the insert text editor table. And it's got all the fields in here for the table. I can modify it here and then I can paste it back to the clipboard. Um, so that's all real easy to do. All right. Uh, 
So cool. I'm not seeing any other questions. Yeah. We'll uh, hit... Any pie chart options? Yes, there is pie charts. Um, so if I go back to C3 charting and I go in here, manage custom functions and C3 chart parameter. And then if I change this to a pie, uh, there's also donut, there's area, spline, scatter chart. Um, so if you want a, a detailed overview of what this can do, uh, you can check out uh, Richard, the, the other demo I did with Richard, uh, where we go into depth on uh, the C3 charting. Margaret, do you have the um, link for that? The C3 charting demo? Oh. Uh, yes. Give me a second to find um, it. I changed that. Why don't you go find that? So I did change it there, but oh, because it's also down here. Uh, let's see, right here. Okay, so we got bar. Um, copy. So you can do different types. I had bar here, I had line here, and that's what gave us the one line here, mm -hmm. and the rest are all bars. Um, so I, I pulled this out so that we can just use JSON. So we're building a, a JSON array here of different colors and different key values for our settings. Um, so now that they're all high, um, this should work. There we go. Uh, so I still have all these lines. Uh, so again, that's just a matter of going into the custom function here. Um, so you can build your own feature anywhere where you can edit this formula. Uh, you can put this formula in your button. You can just copy and paste this formula right out of this and paste it into your button parameter. And it'll work that way too. So you can make different buttons that do different things. So if you want a button that shows it all in a pie chart, you can do that and have another button for bar charts or whatever you need. Um, so here I had uh, the act the lines, grid lines. Um, so right here, I think I have to actually. If I get rid of all of these, that was weird. Um, and then I'm just gonna put in here a couple curly brackets. Uh, don't know if that's gonna work or not. Here, I'm just gonna do this. Cause I think that'll work. And here, I may have to do the same on both of those. Um, I think that'll get rid of the lines. There it is. Sweet. Um, so there I got rid of all the lines, and it still works. Uh, all right, cool. <laughs> I love pie but not cake. <laughs> nothing like, uh, nothing like uh, doing this at 500 miles an hour. Very uh, <laughs> difficult. Yeah, it's a lot to cover in a short amount of time. I, I did my best to get through all of this. Um, well, what we're going to do is we're going to do a practical deployment day, like a follow-up on this, where we're going to take yeah. this file and we're going to have you pick, I uh, like the text thing, the text uh, pop-up notification and glue that into, we're going to, we will, we will surprise you with a sample file for you to play with and you will have to slowly walk through this to, to happen. Well, uh, we put this posted the sample files out there. We really are glad everyone showed up here. The people that are on Twitch are starting to disengage, but uh, it is the end of the day, and there's a conversation about people eating pie, cake, and or donuts. So uh, <laughs> the pie, the cake is a lie, right? That's uh, from uh, yeah Portal. So yes, Portal. Portal. I, I did put my email at the bottom. If you need to contact me, ask me any questions, I'm always available. Uh, and there's a link to my YouTube channel, too. There you go. Um, Kyle's so. YouTube channel is awesome. We like that, too. Yep. So, all right. Well, that's an awesome day today. Anyone else have anything? Cake is a lie. The cake <laughs> is a lie. Yes. So, wonderful game. I love that game. All right, folks. That's it for today. We'll catch you next Monday. All right, everyone. See ya.
Gargano's just stepped up the whole way. Calm, cool, collected the quarterback. Great read, good patience. More importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Try to rally down 10. 9.25 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot, goes down, stands in, throws it left for Amendola, reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling to the 9. Ball slightly behind him, again he makes the ground.